the reality of the situation is starting to sink in. It's absolutely insane the amount of things that we're doing, not stopping to eat or not stopping to drink water. One silver lining this week is uh, yesterday I actually delivered a baby. When anyone sick comes in, we don't have enough people to take care of them. Just very overwhelming. We're headed towards a reopening. Um, you know, there's a piece of me inside that's screaming, this is too soon, this is way too soon. So I'm just getting ready for work today. Hi, my name is Dr. Gratian. Um, I actually am a physician in upstate New York. We're sort of sitting in a calm before a storm, kind of like we're on a hill watching, watching the ocean go out um, right before that, that uh, tidal wave comes back. Things are gonna start to become very serious in the next week or two. I think right now we definitely have enough PPE and our hospital leadership is doing an incredible job. The reality of the situation is starting to sink in and I actually commented to one of my colleagues earlier this week that I felt the shift as I went to work on Monday of this week. And that shift was one of, of seriousness of critical illness. I think that there's a level of fear, a level of fear of going home to our families. I know there are doctors that are friends of mine who their families are living apart from them right now. They aren't seeing their husbands, their wives, their children. I guess one of the things that's sort of keeping me going is, you know, we have all of these people that are, are just um, so selflessly putting themselves um, at risk and, and taking care of people. And um, I'm, really, I'm really proud to work alongside of them. This is my first day. Uh, our hospital created a COVID-only section for the emergency department. So this is my first day working exclusively in that section. Um, it is a little daunting to think about. It sounds like it was pretty busy yesterday and uh, yesterday was actually the opening day. Um, so I will update more later on kind of what that was like. So here I go. Dr. Gration, so I just finished my first shift in the COVID unit. I uh, have my goggles here that are nice and clean. Uh, um, I think I saw about eight patients today, um, which is a full unit. Um, things take a little bit longer to get done there, so the average patient time staying there has been about four hours. It was, it was a wild day. It was definitely really difficult, um, but... But good. Today started out uh, absolutely running with an incredibly sick patient who um, whose room I didn't leave for about four hours. Um, we were we were able to resuscitate her. We were able to get her up to the ICU. But it's absolutely insane the amount of things that we're doing. We're um, not stopping to eat. We're not stopping to drink water. We're not stopping. We're not stopping. <laughs> because people are really, really ill in the ICUs. One silver lining this week is uh, yesterday I actually delivered a baby, which was, uh, it was a really beautiful thing in sort of kind of a grim, grim time period. Last night, after having a pretty tough night the night before, last night I was prepared for the same and, and um, we really didn't see very many patients and I don't know if that's from a flattening of the curve or um, still kind of a calm before the storm. I started thinking yesterday about all of the like little things, um, like the fact that I see the president of our hospital almost on a daily basis. Yesterday morning, he was buying everyone coffee. So I am mid shift. This is sort of what I look like when I take my mask off, uh, the bruising and everything. Um, we've had a lot of really sick patients um, and not enough nursing because they've essentially cut our nursing staff um, because of lower volumes. Except for now, when anyone sick comes in, we don't have enough people to take care of them. It's very overwhelming. It's difficult to be in every room and try to give care um, with people crashing all around you um, and really not enough resources. We still have enough PPE, I guess. 
So I've had a few minutes um, and a few days off to sort of just think about everything that's been going on and how much our lives have changed. I think the most profound change is this sort of loneliness across the board of people really not being able to see each other or interact, including in the hospital. Now that I feel like we're headed towards a reopening, um, you know, there's a piece of me inside that's screaming, this is too soon, this is way too soon. We need a plan, and there's not a plan. And maybe the curve is flattening, but I still see the cases going up, and here they're going up more than they were previously. I guess the other thing is, is the fear. You know, you're in the grocery store and you're wearing your mask and people are avoiding you or you're avoiding people or you go to work and you don't know if that's the day that somebody coughs in your face or something happens and you get exposed and then you go home and you expose your family. And within this, you see like such beauty of people reaching out. My neighbors, bless them, who are 80, told me they'd go shopping for me. I was like, absolutely not. But I mean, that sort of reaching out, that sort of community from afar has been a beautiful thing to see. I think there's a lot of what ifs um, and really none of those can be answered and we're in a lot of uncharted territories.